quickly. I know the time is limited. We were, we were asked to move remotely back in March. And uh, we moved over 900 classes uh, there. And uh, we provided computers and hotspots to, to students that needed uh, those um, uh, facilities. We've provided some CARES Act funds. And then our foundation also raised some funds that we gave to students. In spring, we suspended some of our classes. The hands-on, we suspended till summer and were able to complete them in the summer. This fall semester, um, enrollment is down. Uh, we were that we are down about 19 percent, and um, let me break it down for you. There are three main components: adult basic education. We are down about 80 percent, and then our career technical programs. Uh, we are down about a third because we have to practice social distancing in those classes. And uh, the university transfer programs, we are up slightly. The career tech programs uh, where um, before the pandemic, we had people uh, on waiting lists um, and we're making preparations to expand. As I mentioned, we lost um, a lot of capacity because of the pandemic. And that's why uh, we were planning on expanding it. Where Colonial Restaurant is, is the future home of our new career tech building. We've been fortunate to get money from the state. And I want to thank uh, Senator Castro for helping us get close to $28 million. And so if any one of you know Senator Castro, and I know all of you know her, next time you see her, tell her that ECC is very appreciative of what she did to get us the money. Most of our students thrive best in the in-person environment. And we were hoping that that will happen soon, but uh, not. At the moment, our hands-on classes, we are planning to wrap them up by Thanksgiving. How does spring look like? Same as we have now, spring 2021. Same as it, it is now. Maybe starting summer 2021, but hopefully suddenly fall of 2021, we'll be back to what we'll call near normal. Um, the enrollment declined for fall. It was really hard for our Latino, Latinx students. We declined in fall 2019, we had 4,510 Latinx students. Fall 2020, it is 2,000 791. So you can see the major, major decline in the enrollment. Uh, quick update on a couple more things. ECC is not planning to increase the property tax next year. That will be a saving of $1.5 million for taxpayers. So if you own a home in District 509, a saving of uh, $1.5 million and ECC is holding the tuition flat for 21-22. And that will be the fourth straight year that we have a flat tuition. We did that from 2007 to 2011. And so eight years flat tuition. Last but not least, we've had Columbia College of Missouri on campus for over 20 years. They offer baccalaureate degrees and some master's degrees. Northern Illinois University is offering a bachelor's degree in early education on campus. The students are embedded during the regular semester 
And there were about a dozen students before the pandemic this fall, there are about 20 students. So they are getting their whole degree by not going to the cab, they're taking the classes right on campus. And starting next fall, uh, National Lewis University is going to offer master's and doctoral degrees right on our campus. It means that you can get your associate degree, your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, and doctoral degree all on our campus. National Lewis is gonna give a special rebate to people who live in District 509, up to 25% of the tuition. So if you wanna take a class there and live somewhere else, move to our district and you'll be able to get that. Last but not least, we are featuring a lot of Latinx in our publications. Hopefully you've seen some. Uh, the um, Palatier uh, is showing a Latinx family and also our Impact Magazine. You may not see the person, but this is our Impact Magazine that went out. And the person there is Juan Fernandez, who is our gallery curator at ECC. And then this publication is not out yet. Uh, its impact is coming out within the next couple of weeks. So you are seeing it and it says, warm up to one of the hardest programs on campus, a firefighter candidate. And this person is Jeanette Silvajero, who is an exceptional student blazing a trail as she pursues her dream to serve as a firefighter. So regardless of the profession you wanna to go to, as you know, ECC can get you there. So please spread the word. We want our students back. We need them back. We are Hispanic Seven institution and we had students, 45% uh, of our students being of Hispanic heritage. We miss them. We miss all of our students. Tell them we are open fully for business. So let them come back in January. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to a wonderful program the next hour. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam. We would all clap if we were um, live. We really appreciate the support that ECC has provided to not just our uh, network, but the community. And I am really excited to introduce our guest speaker for today, Dr. May Hicks, who has graciously agreed to uh, be our speaker today. I have her bio I will be reading. Uh, Dr. May Hicks was born in um, and raised in Chicago. She was always a leader and was president of her senior class in high school and vice president of the African American History Club. May worked in her corporate job for 36 years, holding positions in management for over 10 years. She was a vice president in human resources as a senior human resource consultant for over two decades. In her final role in the organization, she was the only global diversity and inclusion program manager for talent acquisition. She ended her tenure with the organization in 2018. May Hicks Jones has been an adjunct professor at numerous higher education institutions for nearly 25 years and has worked at Elgin Community College for 14 years. May holds associate's degrees in general studies and business administration, a bachelor's degree in human services, master's degree in education and a PhD in business management with interdisciplinary areas in human resource management, nonprofit management and organizational development and behavior. She is also a certified master online teacher, a certified adjunct faculty educator and has certification as a strategic human resource manager from Cornell University. May is a first generation college and corporate in her family. May is also the sole proprietor of Amazing One Consulting and has owned the business for 40 years. May has a daughter, Brittany, a son-in-law, Shaylan, a grandson, Kyron, who is nine, and a granddaughter, Nyla Rose, who is six. She resides in St. Charles. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you all. You know what? This is magnificent. I love, I love zooming in with different organizations and I'm biased because I'm part of ECC and I'm on several, uh, several events with Dr. Som all the time and I can never get enough of Dr. Som. And so to be able to have this conversation today, I am just honored. I know a lot of people don't know my backstory. And so to be able to talk about my, my, my backstory versus being in the classroom, I just finished class uh, about an hour ago. Uh, the one thing that I do want to say, as much as I want to be brief, be good and be gone, I do have things that I wanna talk about. And so one of those things is to talk about having an experience like this, to have an organization like uh, EHN, to be involved with ECC. And Dr. Sam hit on it a little bit when he talked about the things that we've done since the pandemic. So this year, we I call it the three Ps. I talked to my students, I said, these are the three Ps. This year has impacted all of our lives, no matter what we look like, or anything, the pandemic, protests, and politics. And so we all have to be engaged. We all have to be involved. This is not a time to be silent. And so I am woke, as, as the young people say today. I am woke. However, I manage what I watch on TV. I don't watch a lot of uh, the stuff that people are watching today. My go-to is the Hallmark channel and lifetime channel i am literally 24 hour christmas shows but i am woke i am involved i know what's going on and things like that so i want to give a little bit more you know when you talk about the things that i i think about in terms of what has happened you know in order to know where you're going you need to know where you've been and so being raised by a single mom in chicago once living in one of Chicago's worst, it was, it, was, it was deemed as the worst housing projects, not in Chicago, but in America. And so for me to sit here with you all as scholars, community, community leaders, and people that are so involved, for me being a person going from projects, when I say projects, I mean housing projects. I don't mean tasks that you do in your company. Housing projects to PhD, I am honored. And so thinking about that, and I talk to this, to these things in my classes because I teach leadership. I look at students and I see possibility, right? I see all the things that they can be, but they need people like you all. They need you not doing a meeting. They need you all the time. And so I look at the things about my roots. So Marcus Garvey once said, a race without the knowledge of their past is like a tree without roots. So I know my history. I know my history has not been a great one, but if I had to choose and to do this again, I would still be who I am. And I say that because my experiences have made me the person that I am today. I think about the students. I have conversations with them. I talk to them online and offline because that's what's important. And I work in a system at ECC where our faculty, our administrators are on task all the time. You don't just see them in meetings. I see them everywhere in our community. And so growing up as a young black African-American female within Chicago, I had no one to help me navigate the system. Today, my mother passed away nearly 20 years ago, but today my mother is still the smartest person I ever met. She did not have a high school diploma and I have five college degrees and I still don't know how she made a dollar out of 15 cents. I don't know how she did it having four babies at the age of 23 as a single parent in Chicago. And so I think about what did I do to make things happen? Number one, I was scared. I was always scared because I didn't know what to expect. My mom didn't actually 
uh, know the difference in an AA, a BA, an MBA, or a PhD. But when I kept graduating from college, she kept saying, is there more that you can do? So I'm like, well, I, I need to get this degree here. And she was like, why? You have a good job. I worked in corporate. I was first generation corporate and first generation college. And so my mom could not help me navigate through that system. But every time I looked and thought about my mom, I knew that I was, I was geared more in life because I watched her get up and go to work every day of my life to a factory. I watch her do that. And so one thing that I say to my students and to anybody that I encounter, whenever you are, wherever you need to be, so whether you are that faculty member or that head of that organization, you need to go back and thank mom, dad, auntie, uncle, grandma, any of the people who helped you. And these are people that fed you and nurtured you throughout the process of you growing up and getting to where you need to be. My mother, she didn't tell me a lot of things, but she told me to always do the right thing. She told me, don't get angry, get educated, leverage possibilities in my life and always be positive. I know, I know a lot of you all on this call right now. And if any of you all have ever seen me negative, I need you to keep it to yourself, but I don't think that that has happened, but I try at all costs to be all that I can be, even when I've been told no several times. I worked in corporate. I was a vice president in human resources of, of one of the largest global financial institutions, not in Chicago, in the world. And I am proud of that. But my organization was a mainstream organization. My organization was not one that was geared toward people of color. And when I say people of color, I did metrics. I looked at the metrics between African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, Caucasians within the organization. And there is no way based on those metrics, I should have even been a vice president. But I was hungry. And I was trying to make sure that other people were hungry as well. I am a servant leader. I am definitely a servant leader because I didn't focus on once I made vice president. Now I'm good. I can just sit back. I got six figures. I'm good. No, let me know what I need to do to pull other people within this organization up. And so I was the person within the boardroom because I sat with the CEO. And when I said we were a large organization, 16,000 plus employees globally. And I would sit with the, the CEO and say, what do we need to do? I never took the popular position. I, sometimes I stood alone. A lot of times I stood alone because I'm like, when you look at the numbers, our African-American, our Hispanic employees are not being promoted, are not making the same salaries. You know, there's not equity. What do we need to do as an organization to change? A lot of times we talked about education. And so we would source a lot of our people from Northwestern, right? Loyola, DePaul. I said, but what there are other schools. There are schools that are geared toward, that have a large amount of Hispanics, that have a large amount of African-Americans. What are we doing? And so I got my organization from a talent acquisition perspective to reach back, go into these universities and look at these students. And so we did that and it changed, it changed, but it's always work to be done. I was one person. And when it was time for me to go, I had to go. Number one, I was in human resources, mainly for the H. It became a lot of R. So I love human, I love the human aspect, but a lot of companies have a lot of resources today. And I wanted to be more than a resource. And so I did a lot of talking to employees and senior management about things that we could do. I did 100% exit interviews. And if you all know, you need to have an exit interview because people will tell you everything when they're leaving an organization. I know that they will. And so, because they've told me. And so a couple of things that I want to make sure that I talk to you all about, these are kind of like my top 10 things that I really want for this to sink in to everybody that I talk to, whether you come to my house or you meet me in an organization, I'm gonna talk about people getting a mentor. Get a mentor and a sponsor. And what I say is 
A mentor is somebody that talks to you. A sponsor is somebody that talks about you when you're not in the room. Who's wearing your t-shirt when you're not around? So we have to lift our heads and say, oh, I expect to be in management within three to five years because you're doing performance appraisals or you're talking to somebody about what you expect. Face your fears and do it anyway. One thing that I rarely say to people, I rarely say this. When I was growing up, because my mom was a single parent of four children trying to make it in Chicago, one thing that I always wanted to be was invisible because I felt like she has to feed all of us. And this is me as a kid. So we have to watch the things that we say about around children. I always thought that my mother had to give away one of us and that would be me. And so I said that because of certain dynamics within our household. And so I was very quiet. I was an introvert. And so those of you all in this call that know me would say, oh, no, that can't be. Maya's not an introvert. Look at Dr. Son. Yes, I am. I'm an introvert. But because of what I had to go through in my life, silence was not an option. I had to learn how to speak up for myself and others. And so that's why I say face your fears and do it anyway. I remember when I was going through my doctoral degree. So there were four of us. My, I had a brother, two sisters, and my mom. Those are all the people I grew up with. My two sisters died in their early 30s. Both of them died in their early 30s. And I remember when my younger sister was going through cancer treatment, the one thing I wanted to do was quit my doctoral program. I, I said, I can't do this. She depended on me for everything. And I talked to one of my instructors. And this just happened to be the only minority instructor I had in my doctoral program. This lady literally said to me, my husband and I both are cancer survivors. She said, this is an excellent program. If you quit, you will never be accepted back into the program, no matter what circumstance you have. And what I did, I went to bed that night. The next day I woke up and I never stopped. That was over 25 years ago. And so I faced that fear and I did it anyway. I learned from my mistakes. Of course, I'm a perfectionist, you all know that. But I think I made a mistake or two in my life at some point in my life, I don't know when. Uh, but I have made mistakes and I've learned from those mistakes and I've moved on from those mistakes. I have five college degrees, I have a ton of certification, but I never stopped learning. I learned so much from everyone, from my students, from my two grandchildren who are very opinionated by the way, and many of you know their mother. And so you know that they have opinions, uh, but I learn from them. Be a leader and speak up. You may not always have, you know, the most positive position on takes. So I've been on calls where everybody was in agreement on a topic and, and I, I sat there and I'm like, I, but I don't agree. I don't, what do I do? I, you know what, you know what, I have a question. And so I learned how to say things. We've talked about, one thing you all know, we talk about a lot of things at ECC and we had a session on microaggressions and I could just recall the things that I said were not popular about microaggressions and they hit the paper. And you know what, I was good with that because if you wanna know my position on anything, just ask me. And so I don't always take the positive position. Be open to change. We all know that the only person that likes change is a wet baby, but life is changing before us every single day. It is not a destination, it's a journey. We have to continue to know that the pandemic is constantly changing us. Didn't we just go back down to tier three? They're shutting off some more stuff. But like I tell my students, you know what? You need to show up. You all have showed up all the time. It's, we started in August, I tell them. We're in November, next week is Thanksgiving. And what I tell my students is that you all keep showing up. I have not had students in two of my classes, nobody has dropped. And so we talk about that. I'm like, you are one class closer to matriculation. I need you to stay the course. Celebrate your successes. We have seen so much, so many things happen this year, but when our students, when our family members, when our friends graduate, let's celebrate that. 
when our friends, I have a ton of friends that have gone through COVID, coronavirus, have gotten over it. I'm like, let's do a Zoom, you know, because people need to hear from us. They need to hear from us when times are good and when times are not so good. We need to be a voice. Pay it forward whenever, whenever we're done. Let's pay it forward. Let's make sure that we go back. We reach back as far as we can and we pull somebody else up. We have to do this. We have to do it. We have to do it often. Respect yourself and others. I don't care how far you get in your life. I don't care how many credentials you get. I don't care what you stand for. You need to respect other people. You need to treat and respect people with dignity all the time. We can't just pick and choose. We have to do it all the time. And one big thing I tell students all the time is be yourself. Everybody else is taken. I can't be anybody but me. I am a black female born and raised in Chicago. I own that. And that will forever be my backstory. I don't care how long I've lived. Well, I've lived out here longer than I've lived in Chicago. But my backstory starts with those humble beginnings with a mom who at one point was on welfare with me. And so at one point in my life, I was on welfare. And so I do not, I do not forget that. And so I am still who I was 30 and 40 years ago. I'm still that person and I always will be May. And then one last thing I always tell my students is, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. That quote by Seneca, I live by that because I prepared myself. All opportunities don't come to me all the time. I can tell you, if you hear 100 no's, all you need is one yes. So you have to stay the course and you have to do it all the time. Are there any questions? Thank you so much, May, for that um, sharing your story. It's very important for all of us to speak speak up and share our voice. Um, are there questions for Dr. Me? Oh, okay, so what classes do I teach? Uh, I teach uh, global business. Uh, I teach, and these, uh, like Dr. Sam said, you know, we're, we're mainly online, but I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm very biased about ECC. I've been to, I've, I've gone to five different schools. East, had ECC been an option for me when I was going uh, through college, I would have definitely been at ECC. We have great leadership, um, my department. When pandemic hit in March, only thing I remember was my dean going online and they just started sending us all of this information. You know what, if you don't have, you know, the right, uh, uh, mics, if you don't have the right, you know, keyboards, go out there and get it. We need to get prepared today. They start putting classes out there for all of us faculty. And remember, I've taught at several other schools. I've never seen the impact that I saw at ECC. So this semester, synchronously, I'm teaching global business. I'm also teaching principles of management and I teach human resource management. And my students show up. They show up, I just finished a class and, and sometimes I have to, I get teary eyed because I'm telling them we have less than a month, but you all have been fabulous. They have stayed the course with me. Uh, so those are the classes I teach. Let's see. Okay, so I think I've answered the questions. Yeah, I, I did. Oh, my, I, wait a minute. I uh, love it. Thank you, Miss One of the 10. Oh, okay, Gwen, I, I do have them written down too. Uh, but also I wanna say, I didn't realize that, you know, I'm always talking about ECC shows up and I'm looking at at least how many, six or seven ECC people on here right now because ECC shows up. That's what ECC does. And uh, you, uh, Dr. Sam talked about Columbia College. I've helped my students to transition from ECC to Columbia College because I've been at ECC for 14 years but I've worked at Columbia for 19. And I actually got my Columbia position as a faculty member from going to a diversity um, job fair at ECC. 
So ECC just has a lot of impact on our community. Uh, on my daughter, who's a graduate of ECC and has worked at ECC. Um, when she was at ECC, I thought she had ran away from home because she was never home. So yeah, I think I got all the questions. Thank yep, you so I much. And thank you everyone for sending your comments for Dr. Hicks Jones. Um, up next, we uh, wanted to sh share a little bit more about our EHN scholars from this year. If you attended our June meeting, then you might remember that we announced the three high school students who received scholarships this year. Um, they were um, Lisbeth Tlatenchi, Edson Rangel, and Omar Renteria. Unfortunately, they couldn't join us live, but there is a video from Omar Renteria that we wanted to share with you guys so that you hear the impact that our um, network has had on the students. So hoping that the technology um, cooperates, I'm going to share the video. Can you all see it? Hi, my name is Omar Renteria, and I am a 2020 graduate from Larkin High School, and I will be attending Western Illinois University to major in criminal justice this fall. Pursuing a higher education has always been a goal of mine. Throughout my life, I have seen my parents struggle in many ways, especially financially. This has helped me realize the impact that education has on a person's life. Attending college will allow me to earn a degree, which will open many doors for my future. This will help me become financially stable and finally be able to give back to my parents after all the hard work they have done for me. In high school, one of the most life-impacting clubs I joined was Larkin Hispanic Association. As I met new people and discussed each other's backgrounds, it made me realize the struggles Hispanics have to go through in order to have a decent way of living. I can't hear anything. I don't know if anybody else can. Yeah, sound went away halfway through. Let me try again. People and discuss each other's backgrounds. It made me realize the struggles Hispanics have to go through in order to have a decent way of living. That's when I realized change needed to happen, which is why I ran and became the president of Larkin Hispanic Association. I wanted to make an impact against racial discrimination because I believe everyone should be treated equally regardless of where they came from. As a president, I inspired many students to pursue their dreams and not let their background define who they are or who they will be by personally having conversations with them in our meetings. Now that I will be more educated with the law, I'm going to help make a change in our system in hopes that racial discrimination becomes non-existent. When I got the news that I was nominated as a recipient for the Elgin Hispanic Network Scholarship, I was ecstatic. It brought a lot of relief because I was stressing on how I was going to pay for college tuition, especially with the pandemic going on. I want to thank all of the donors because with you all, this has helped lessen the financial burden of college. Hopefully in a couple of years, I will be able to donate to this organization and help students like me chase their dreams. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for letting me know that the sound had gone. Um, we are supporting some really wonderful students and it makes me really happy um, to be able to share one of their messages with you. And as you know, last year we started an, an adult non-traditional scholarship and during our Thanksgiving luncheon, we had the first recipient uh, join us and um, say thank you to everyone. So today we are announcing our scholarship recipient for this year and I'm going to invite Diana ortega Eret to introduce her. Thanks, Diana. And um, I have been looking forward to this for a while now, and I am thrilled to introduce to you um, our adult scholarship recipient for this year. But before I do that, I want to thank people, some, many of who are on this call, who have helped with the Elgin Hispanic Network 
um, scholarship committee over the course of this last year. Um, in the spring, um, I worked with Rodrigo Lopez, who's here from ECC, thank you. Dr. Manuel Salgado from ECC also has helped and he was a tremendous help. Uh, Melissa Lane, who is not here, um, but I wanna acknowledge her regardless. Uh, Franklin Ramirez and Richard Jacobs, who also helped select um, uh, the high school recipients um, who each received a $1,500 college scholarship this last spring. And over the course of this summer and this fall, I worked with a different team in um, going through the adult non-traditional uh, scholarship application process and um, reviewing the applications. And um, here on the call, I wanna thank uh, Sh Sue Schultz from AAUW, thank you so much for your help. And also Carla Jimenez from U46, thank you so much. Um, we have some really incredible community volunteers um, helping uh, to um, lift up. Um, and it's really a tough choice many times because there's a lot of students who are very deserving. Um, but uh, without further ado, I'm going to say a little bit about Daniela Limon, and then you'll all get a chance to hear from her directly. Daniela Limon um, is a student at Dominican University. Um, Dr. Sam, you'll be very glad to know that she also started at Elgin Community College. Um, and then she went on to Dominican University and she is studying to become a nutritional epidemiologist. Um, her goal is to um, help the community with developing programs and policies to benefit the health of diverse communities in the United States. So she wants to continue her education with a graduate degree program in public health eventually. Um, she has extensive volunteer service with the Northern Illinois Food Bank with Huff and Hilltop Elementary School after school programs, Head Start and St. Joseph Catholic Church. And um, she's a very busy person putting in 30 hours a week for an unpaid internship that is a requirement for her degree program, plus 20 hours a week at Hanover Township. And plus she's a full-time student and all of that still maintaining a 3.9 GPA which is very impressive. And she's also a DACA status student, um, which means that she's had to fight harder than a lot of other students to get to where she's at today. So I hope that you all welcome um, Daniela Limon and we have some questions for you here, so. Thank you, I'm really honored to be here and be able to, to meet all of you. I usually don't have the opportunity to meet scholarship sponsors, so I'm very excited to see you. Well, we couldn't be more thrilled um, to be supporting a, somebody of your caliber. And um, so I know that we sent you some questions ahead of time um, that we're, we're hoping that you can share with the group here. First of all, what has been your experience in school so far this year? Um, my experience in school has been quite different due to the uh, COVID-19. Um, and even though I've taken online classes before, I'm very used to the online learning, but the main um, difference that I experienced this year was through my internship. Uh, just like you mentioned, I am required to do 1200 hours of unpaid work. Um, and at the time when the whole pandemic restrictions began, I was in the middle of my one of my internships, which I had to stop doing for a couple of weeks before they let me work from home in order to continue doing my hours. So it was a different experience because I had to learn how to do a little bit of telehealth to provide nutrition education to patients um, over the phone or through video calls. So that was a great learning experience. Um, but it was, it was a little difficult because my last rotation, which was supposed to be in a hospital setting, uh, was canceled over the summer. And I was afraid that they wouldn't let me do it this fall semester, which would have set me back one more semester. Mm -hmm. um, but thankfully the program director was able to find a hospital like willing to work with us with um, other students. 
And just a couple of weeks ago, I completed my last internship at Alexium Brother. Wow. So I was very excited about that too. <laughs> wow. 1,200 hours of unpaid internship. That's, that's impressive. Um, how has COVID impacted you and your family? Um, thankfully, my, both of my parents are still working right now. Um, my, my dad is the one who's working full time. My mom is working part time. But um, like no one has been affected directly by the virus. Like no one has gotten sick, uh, which is something I'm very thankful uh, about. Um, it's just been very stressful for everyone, um, especially because uh, we can't really, you know, get to be together uh, with other family members who may be more vulnerable to the virus. And we're just trying to be very cautious and do our part you know, to keep everyone healthy. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you and your family have not been personally affected. Um, and I hope that continues to stay the, the same for you. Um, how can you share how the EHN scholarship will help you? And how difficult was it to apply um, to the scholarship? Yes, um, so I'm very thankful for the scholarship. It really made a huge difference this semester um, because because of the 1200 hours that I have to do, my time at Dominican was extended one extra semester. So it's usually a two year program uh, for transfer students. But since we have to complete these hours, you can extend your time either one semester or one more year. For me, it was one more semester. Unfortunately, the scholarships that I received were not renewable for an extra year and I had to find additional funding to pay uh, this amount uh, for this semester. And it was a challenge because most scholarships have deadlines earlier in the year uh, and they're usually required for students to be full-time students for an entire year and in my case it was just one semester so i struggled a lot finding scholarships um, that would be applied for this semester and being able to find the Alden hispanic network um, it was truly a blessing i was able to find other scholarships as well um, I didn't get all of them, but I did get enough um, to, you know, provide enough funding for this semester, and and that really that really made a difference because, like you mentioned, I was working thirty hours at the internship plus my part time job plus you know trying to submit all these applications on time, and it was starting to become a little bit overwhelming. But uh, I mean, I knew that it was going to be worth it at the end. Yeah. Do you sleep? <laughs> Just kidding. Sometimes. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to share with this EHM community? Well, you know, just like I mentioned before, it's really an honor for me being able to be a recipient. And um, just like Dr. May was saying, I would love to, you know, soon be able to pay it forward and be on the other side of the screen, be able to sponsor a scholarship or even like, you know, be able to come up with a new scholarship to help other students who are not able to qualify for federal financial aid. And, um, yeah. You really inspire me. You really inspire me and motivate me to do that, um, hopefully soon. That's wonderful. It is tougher to reach out to an adult, non-traditional high school graduate audience. And so I'm glad that word got to you about this opportunity. Um, just for uh, everyone to note here, there's a question. How did you hear about the EHM scholarship? I actually found out about it um, through the EHM website well actually the facebook the facebook uh, page that that you have that's where i found out about it okay i think a friend of mine shared it so <laughs> perfect i'm glad that's getting around and so that's a great reminder for all of us to continue to post opportunities on our ehn facebook page um, if you're a member and to pass those along to people who you know might um, be well served by those opportunities and I just want to say, Daniela, normally we are in person for our November um, event. And at the November event is when the uh, scholarship recipients are invited and treated like celebrities. So just know that uh, this is very unusual for us. If we were together in person, everybody here would want to get their picture taken with you. Um, so um, just keep us posted over the course of the year and know that we're all going to be cheering you on. And thank you so much for sharing uh, your precious time with us today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate everyone as well. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I would have been the one asking to take pictures with you. <laughs>
Thank you, Daniela. Thank you, Diana. We are so inspired by you, Daniela. Keep up the good work. And you can see a lot of wonderful messages people have been sending in the chat, um, continuing to encourage you. Um, next up, we have a special video from Olas from ECC. ECC is a great supporter of the uh, Latino community. So fingers crossed that the technology works. I'm gonna share their video now. Hola, mi nombre es Ibiza Velázquez, and I am the current OLAS Club President. Hola, my name is Pedro Aranda, and I am the former president of the Organization of Latin American Students. Hola, my name is Priscila Gonzalez, and I am the 2017-2018 president of the Organization of Latin American Students. OLAS is a student organization at Elgin Community College that was founded in 1990. Our mission is to promote cultural awareness about the Latinx community through our four pillars, education, fundraising, community service, and social networking. We have done various events to support the Latinx community and to promote awareness within the community. We have also partnered up with other organizations through ECC and also the Elgin area, such as Elgin Hispanic Network, Centro de Información, Illinois Coalition for Immigration and Refugee Rights, and also Maldef and more. Being part of OS has definitely been an extremely social networking opportunity. Attending the annual Hispanic Heritage Month celebration at the Board and Public Library, the Algin Hispanic Network, the City Mansion, the Central Information Benefit Gallery, and the Algin Culture Library has definitely increased the level of interaction with community members in the city of Algin. In my term as president, me and my Ebor worked in a lot of events. One of them was Nuestra Belleza Latina, which was to educate people about the Latin culture where one of the girls won a $500 scholarship. One other thing we did was DACA. It was a big deal going on with DACA back then, so we make sure that we educated our community college and peers in order to support our DACA recipients at the college. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the transition from last year's team to this year's has been very difficult, and we're still trying to recruit officers to fill our team. With all us being around since 1990 at ECC, this year specifically marks the 30th anniversary of OLAS. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we were unable to provide all of our planned events on campus. So we had to move everything onto our social media platforms where we provided a virtual foundation. Hola, mi nombre es Jessica Rodriguez, and I am the our organization has been able to continue to allow us to be in the business space for everyone to share culture and identity. For becoming president, our last was explained that the vision is for the space for people who are in town. I hope to make I want to encourage you to join OLAS because it does open a lot of doors just like you did for me. I am currently doing my master's and I'm graduating debt free. Why? Because I got involved in my college and I got involved in my community. I want to join Olas if they're dancing like that all the time. Was anybody else dancing? <laughs> uh, thank you so much, um, everyone, uh, for joining us. We're almost towards the end of the event. I wanted to invite Elisa and David to join the virtual podium to talk to us about our EH and SCAT talent event in December. Hello. 
Um, I think we're supposed to be showing a video. I have a PowerPoint. Show. Yeah. Or a slideshow, I'm sorry. Slideshow, yeah, not a video. <laughs> Are we going to do that first or? Uh, I think we should. Right, okay. Lisa, it's your yours. <laughs> yes, you. this is this is mine. And and as everybody knows, um, and we've been uh, reiterating how this has been our luncheon. And I wanted to share some information of what this is our biggest fundraiser event. Um, it's a strong color color. I'm sorry, collaboration that we have with ECC. They've done an amazing job for several years now. They've been um, supporting us and helping us through. Um, you know, every year we we have our event there. If you want to go on to the next slide. Um, this is a beautiful picture. ECC is, I, I love ECC. I think I'm one of the um, students from there as well. And I think it's near and dear to my heart. And this is a beautiful autumn picture that, you know, paints a really, this is what we end up seeing when we're going to ECC to our luncheon. So this is very motivating and inspiring and, and very peaceful. Um, the next slide kind of shows, um, if we can go to the next slide there, please. This is the business center where we actually hold our event. We are um, welcomed with beautiful, colorful flowers and it sets the perfect tone. Um, and it actually it's our Thanksgiving celebration. It starts there. And I think, you know, it's like a very welcoming moment when we're walking up those stairs. And our next slide, and I'm trying to hurry up because I know we're kind of short on time. Um, we have a great uh, visual of what our Thanksgiving luncheon looks like. Um, we have a community that it's from different sectors. Um, we, we unite, um, we, we actually connect with different um, organizations, people who support us. And it's really nice to see that we all come together. We meet new people. We actually have a lot going on and it's wonderful because we always have presenters. And then if we can go to the next one, please. Um, and we've been very blessed and lucky to have many amazing presenters that always leave us an inspirational message. Um, just exactly like Dr. Hicks did today, um, we have had last year our Latina Lieutenant and Governor, Evelyn and Sanganetti. Um, and she maybe left us a message about keep going and, and motivating us and you know continuing on. And I know with so many changes going on right now, it's something that we could definitely take into and put into practice. And our next slide. We have our lovely Diana, and she's done an amazing job with our scholarships. This is one of our recipients for the adult scholarship, the non-traditional student. Coming back, um, we actually do scholarships for students. We've done three to four, depending on where we're at. Um, um, we have enough funds, we'll do four, which is very helpful. And as you guys have just recently heard of one of our um, recipients that it's very motivational and helpful for them and making a difference. And it's something that's really, I know they have a lot of work and the work cut out for them, but they've done an amazing job giving um, the scholarships and evaluating and processing these applications. Our next um, slide. We also get to have um, the honor of recognizing organizations and members from our community and the Elgin Hispanic members that have been there um, and do outstanding work for our community. And we are very grateful for everything they do. And this is the time that we actually get to um, acknowledge them and also thank them for everything, all the services that they have provided for us. Our next slide. And another thing we do for fundraising, we do raffles. Um, we also do have baskets. It's a really fun time. As you can see, everybody's smiling because we get anxious and eager and motivating to try to get the, uh, the prizes. But it's really nice because we all come together. You know, we, we donate and we have ways to try to make um, the fundraising so we can achieve um, getting more scholarships to the students in our community. Our next slide. And as we come to what we're at now, if we come to an empty registration area. This is where we would come and register and have everybody. And as we see, there's nobody there. So as we can acknowledge, COVID has changed our lives. I don't know who else feels that way, but you know how it's different. And anybody else feels this way where our life has changed? We look at things differently and we kind of really value what we had previously. And next slide. Um, this is where we actually have um, our event and it's an empty room. Um, nobody's there, no laughter, no socializing, sharing special moments. So it, it has totally changed our lives. Um, COVID has impacted us in many ways, but it's important to realize that we can make a change still. We don't have to be distant. Um, we can be physically distant, but not getting together and working as a group. Um, we can go to our next slide. 
as we see here, these are some of our events that we've had are the Elgin Hispanic Network meetings. We are coming together, we are bonding, we are actually physically there together. We connect with each other and help support our ideas, our, um, our, our events that we're trying to do and give each other that uh, push that we need. So as you see, we all come together. Here's our board where we're actually working and trying to achieve our, our uh, support to fundraise to get um, scholarships to help the students in our community. So we do ask you to please come together with us um, and make a difference. Help us achieve our mission and fundraise to make a difference in our community and help students out. So really right now what we're doing is to fundraising and this is a moment that we definitely will be doing helping the community out. So that hasn't changed. Together we can still come and unite and actually support each other. So we do ask you for your support and possibly impact our community. So Elgin Hispanic Network is still working together even though we physically can't see each other, but we are working hard to continue on to help the community. Awesome, thank you, Lisa, for that. Um, I know we don't have that much time, so I'm gonna be very quick. I actually was gonna say some more words, but I'm gonna be very quick. Kudos to this board, I mean, you know, again, you saw and yeah, everyone that knows me and, and knows the board and knows the organizations, we love to get together. We love to be around, you know, it's all about familia, family, and us laughing, sharing good times with each other at our EHN luncheon. But unfortunately, due to the pandemic, you know, we, we don't have that opportunity to do that. Now, as a board, we could have said, hey, you know what? Let's just postpone our fundraising or our event and we'll just do something next year, you know? But we look at those stories from the students, the, the recent scholar, that's what motivates us, that keeps us going. Um, schools are not closed, the universities are not closed, they're doing things differently. Students still need, are going to school. Students are still needing uh, funds to go to school. I mean, I, I can't say that the decrease in Latino students at ECC was due to financial, but I bet you a, a good portion of it could have been because of financial, because maybe mom and dad are not working or the students themselves aren't working. So they need all the help that they can. So again, I send just want to send them. I have money. We have money. Oh. Send them to us. Oh, <laughs> Dr. Sam has money. We need <laughs> to let people know. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll have to let people know that Dr. Sam has money for them. But I mean, you know, again, kudos to this board. We could have just sat back and say, we'll just do this another time. But with the creative minds, everyone came up with a good idea. So again, because we can't be together physically, we could still be together virtually. So what we decided to do for this year is we're gonna have a, a talent show that will be hosted for our December year end event, um, totally free to all our members, to the community, to the public. So share, make sure you share and let people know to check us out. Um, all the, the way we're gonna try to raise money is obviously through still corporate sponsors, organization sponsors. Again, thank you to like groups like ECC, I think PuroClean, uh, Provena Health, uh, Amita Health, uh, a lot of them have already stepped up. Sherman, I believe, stepped up. I mean, I, I might be forgetting some other names, but a lot of organizations have um, sponsored uh, for the event to go on. Uh, it is, it's gonna be a talent show. Myself will be in the talent show. Linda Ramirez will be in the you talent show. You can't miss show. that one. <laughs> <laughs> I recruited my son, Gabriel, who will be in the talent show. And I think uh, there'll be a couple singers as well. I'm kind of afraid of the singers. My son is, 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 is geeked up or hyped up. He thinks he's going to beat me. So the, basically how it's going to work is when we do the live talent show, you guys are going to be able to come in and view. Again, totally free. But the way we're going to raise the money and determine the winners is by donating to the your favorite talent. So if, if you like my, my act, you just donate $5, $10, $100, whatever you like to donate. And once we uh, tally all the donations, uh, we'll announce the winner in January. So our hope is that we might let this go all the way to the end of December. But again, more information to come. Um, I'm thinking, came out, so am I missing anything? Just if everybody can please share the, our link and our information so you don't have to be an EHN member to participate and donate. Um, we do want to have a lot more people view it and, and get more donations that way. So we would really appreciate if you can help us with sharing the event. And again, I'm competitive, so I want to win. I even want to beat my son. I don't care. 
<laughs> I definitely want to beat Linda, so make sure you vote for me, my talent. You know, who knows what I might do. I don't know yet, but <laughs> be ready, everyone. So we're all hyped up, and we're hoping to bring an awesome show for you guys in December. And again, all the proceeds are going to our, our scholarships. We're hoping to give out four scholarships again next year, three to high school students and one to a, a, an adult scholarship as well. So please help us help the cause. Thank you. Love you. Te quiero mucho. Everyone have a great, happy Thanksgiving. And Diana, I think if you want to close it out. Thank you, David and Elisa. Um, just a reminder for people, we are still accepting nominations for the Person of the Year and Organization of the Year Award. Uh, we extended the deadline to December 4th, so you have a little bit of time to go to our website and fill out the form. Stay tuned on our Facebook page for more information about the December event. And thank you so much for joining us today to celebrate our scholars. Really? Uh, I'm sorry, one last thing. Uh, oh. Baskets. We are in need of baskets for uh, for the event as well. We do have some baskets already. We'll, we will collect baskets to the end of the month. So if you do have a basket you want to donate, please donate that, and then we'll have them online for people to check out. Thank you, guys. Everyone have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you, David. David. The form to nominate a person or organization of the year is on our website. If you go to the homepage, there will be a, a yellow bar at the top where you can click and it will take you to the form. Any other questions or comments before we close? Diana? The raffle tickets, when can we start buying those for the baskets for the December event? Uh, Maggie? Maggie has a form that we will be posting on our Facebook page as well as on the website. And I'm going to link it today so they can start buying raffle tickets for the baskets today. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to jump in really quick. Uh, Maggie from Girl Scouts, also on the board of EHN. Uh, the form will be available. It already has some several baskets, and I am super excited to buy some of the tickets for those baskets, okay? So you guys definitely have to check it out, and uh, it's a really easy process. You just fill the form, go to our website to uh, make your payment, and then your name is submitted into the basket that you have chosen, and we will announce those uh, winners at our December uh, event coming up on December 16th. Did I get that right? Yes. So please, everybody join us. Have a good time with the tickets and share the link so that more people can support our students. And pictures of the baskets will be posted on our Facebook page too? Yes. Uh, yes, that's correct. So we will have uh, that link ready to go. We just want to finalize any other baskets that may be coming in this week. And um, so everybody can really see what they have available. And like I said, everything on there is already super awesome and amazing. I, I want to buy a ticket for everything. Um, so we will share it on our Facebook. It'll be um, available to everybody. So please share it with family and friends and you guys will all be able to uh, purchase a ticket or 10 or 20, whatever you guys want. Thank you, Maggie. And thank you again, everyone. I hope you have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. We'll see you guys next month. Thank you. Bye-bye.